Hey, hi, Sandeep. Good morning. Uh, hi, sir. Good morning. Hi, Gautam. Good morning. Hi, sir. Good morning, sir. We can wait for one more minute. Yeah. We can sure. start. Sir, on Saturday, you have posted one question. ETL testing includes. Could you uh -huh. please explain that? Uh -huh. That reports the invalid data. How it shows the valid data, no, sir. Okay, just a minute. Uh, go to the question once again. Okay, so second question you're talking. ETL testing includes, no? Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So just, just a minute. Let's everyone join. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now. That. Okay, fine. Now uh, let's start. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my voice is audible. Sir, your voice is breaking. How is it now? Is it audible now? Still breaking? Hello? Hello, still my voice is breaking or is it audible now? Hello. Hello, I'm audible now. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, fine. Oh, sorry. I was on mute here, sorry. Okay, fine, perfect. So let's start now. So before proceeding, let's discuss with the questions. Um, so I think I have posted two questions last week. The first one was simple. ETL stands for extract, transform, and load. Okay, hello. I think can that is clear to... Hello? Yeah, hello? Yeah, can you please share the screen actually? It's not visible. Okay, okay, fine, sure. Is it visible now? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, so, it is. Uh -huh, fine. Very good. So I just started with the two questions which I have posted on the group. Uh, you all might have seen that. Okay. So the first question was ETL stands for, and I think the answer is uh, B, extract, transform, and load. I think that is clear to everyone. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yes. and the next question was ETL testing includes. Guys, this questions, what I'm giving, this all are from interview perspective, okay? Because we have seen this kind of questions are asked. So I'm making note of all these questions. So ETL testing includes, the first option is verify with the, whether the data is transforming correctly according to the business requirement, okay? And this is, also correct because in ETL, T stands for transformation. Transformation is nothing but applying the calculation in the business logic, what the business actually wants. And this is one of the important reason for an ETL project in any organization, okay? To apply the logic or to apply the formula, what the business uh, wants, what they're expecting, okay? So that's why the first option is correct. It says that we are verifying whether the data is transforming correctly according to business requirement or not, okay? So this point is correct. Second point is make sure that ETL application reports invalid data and replaces with default values, yeah. So you have to, to check the invalid data as well. In ETL, it is a responsibility to verify the data quality you should check that bad data or the data which is not giving full information or data which is incorrect or data which is truncated. We will see all those things, okay? So bad data is a bucket. In that, we have a lot of data. Incorrect data is also a bad data, okay? Uh, truncated data is a bad data. Missing data is a bad data. So we will see all those examples. So as an ETL tester, it is a responsibility to check the data quality as well. It means the data is correct or not. Okay. So uh, now the next one is 
make sure that data loads at expected time frame to improve scalability and performance yeah so you have to take care about the load part as well so you might remember that we have discussed about the jobs okay the jobs are nothing but a small script which is used to load data and inside that we are applying transformation logic so you have to validate that as well that the data is getting loaded correctly into the different layers of etl or not and that load should be correct that load should be full okay so you have to validate that as well so it means the option is all of the above all the three options are correct as an etl tester you have to validate that the transformation logic is correct or not first option second option you have to take care about the data quality that's also correct third option data load is correct or not okay so these three are correct so the option is d all of the above any question on this any confusion hello everyone anyone any question on this guys am i audible yes sir okay yeah, so yeah, is this clear yeah yes yes okay perfect <clears throat> so before uh, so from today onwards i'll be sharing few more questions so uh, humble request to everyone try share your answer if you want to share in the group you can share in the group if you want to ping me in personal window you can ping me in personal window but do share okay so it will help me to understand that uh, my audiences my students their understanding or not okay fine so before proceeding with today's class any question in general or any question on the topics what we have discussed so far please tell me if you have any questions so then i will proceed okay so it means there is no question but you can ask question at any point of time okay so so far we have discussed uh, last week i think i have taken three classes Wednesday, thursday and friday we have discussed about etl okay and this is one of the very important area of the entire it industry because etl is nothing but it works on data okay data is the bread and butter for etl project and we have discussed that all the new jobs what we have in the market or the new job profile like data analytics data analyst data scientist and all those things artificial intelligence machine learning they all work on top of data if you have good quality of data then all those things will give you good result but if the data but if the uh, quality of data is not good so all those things will will not be of that much importance okay so that's why uh, etl tester uh, has a very significant role in any project and second thing we have discussed that we are discussing the generic test cases okay so i'm not concerned about a particular project about a particular domain so we are discussing the generic test cases as a tester you have to test at each and every point okay whether that is there in your project scope or not but you should know that because you never know what kind of questions you will get in interviews you never know down the line in which organization you will be what kind of retail project you will be working on so you should know all those things okay so etl stands for extraction transformation and loading okay and then extraction transform and then load okay so you are extracting data from multiple sources okay so the number of source depends on the project on which you are working or it depends on the business so the restaurant example which we have seen we have seen that we have eight sources so whenever you are going to work in etl project so your first question to the business stakeholders should be that how many sources how many data sources you have okay that's the first question so so till now we are discussing only about extraction extraction means you are extracting data from multiple sources if extraction is not correct if extraction is not full if the data extracted is incorrect then your staging area your transformation area and data what you have loaded this all will be of no use at all because this is the root if the root is not good so there is no you you cannot expect good fruit okay you will get rotten fruit 
okay and that will be of no use so that's why we are trying to understand extraction first of all okay fine so before proceeding with the slides i think this is having 134 slides okay and these all slides will not speak only from ATL perspective because guys these days you have to understand etl you have to understand elt you should know the structure of database data warehouse the cloud and all those things so i will try to give you a flavor of each and every concepts okay so just bear with me keep some patience okay because nowadays in interviews the interviewer is not expecting that the candidate should know only about etl no they want you to have the knowledge of other uh, domain as, uh, other technology landscape as well so that's why i'll give you a flavor of other as well okay so this is this this sheet is only about extraction <clears throat> and then transformation and loading so first of all let's complete the extraction part then we'll move to the transformation and loading and uh, uh, yeah i have received a request last week that to show some demo so i will try to show you some demo how to extract it and all these things different layers as well that will give you a realistic view okay but guys to be frank as an ETL tester you don't have to bother about a job that what is present inside a job that is a total task of a developer they have to bother about that but if you're interested in your project if you're working you can discuss with the developer you can go through that uh, scripts which is mentioned inside any particular job and that is the main heart of any ATL project because all the data loading part all the transformation everything is mentioned there but I will show you the layers how 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 the data moves from one layer to another layer and as an ETL tester what is the responsibility what all uh, functionalities you have to test okay so far we have discussed these five points okay any question on these five test cases you know when you're going for an interview so interview will ask you that okay tell me uh your means from where you will start test cases so you have to tell i'm not telling that you have to mention all these points i'm doing this 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 but you should know maybe he can ask you that okay in header and trailer what you're evaluating okay this kind of questions are asked so you should make a note of this. Any question till here, what we have discussed? No questions? Okay, fine. Next thing as a tester, what you have to validate is completion of file download. Any idea what is this completion of file download? Anyone? If you have worked, please share your experience. What? What's the meaning of completion of file download? Those who are pressure, apply your common sense and then tell me what it might be. Completion of file, what's the meaning of this? Mm -hmm. Come on. Any idea? Okay, no problem. So, my, mm -hmm. sorry, my guess is like, uh... The source file uh, download, uh, we should have, uh, when we run the, when we run through the job, we need to ensure that the, the report says that uh, the, 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 the file is fully downloaded, so something like that. Perfect, 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 perfect answer, 100% right. That's the answer. Perfect, very good, good try. See, sometimes uh, you might have experienced that you are downloading a file, okay? Maybe from your Gmail account, okay, or maybe from internet. Huh? It happens the file size is big. You have downloaded, your downloading is in progress. You went to that download folder. You are trying to open that file. So, but that file will not be opened or the format will not be correct. Have you experienced this? It will show that yes. downloading is in progress, something like that. Okay. Yes, yes. So why it has happened? Because the file was not downloaded completely okay and you are trying to open it and i think you all have experienced this kind of thing okay so it happens so in that case what you should do you should wait for some more seconds or maybe some more minute and then you should open the file right similarly whenever you are receiving file 
from the source team. And guys, file is nothing. I've shown you this is like an, maybe you can get data in an Excel sheet like this. Okay, you can get data in an Excel sheet like this. Or sometime you can get data in dot dat format in a notepad format as well. It's like uh, a restaurant. So don't think that Tanvir Wati is mentioning about file, what is a file and all those things. Don't get confused. So maybe you will get information like this. Suppose this is Delhi restaurant and okay. And they'll be separated. Sometimes the data is separated by comma. So it will be like this, 06, 12, 2021. Suppose we have one more. Let's take one more column, profit. The profit is 200 rupees. Okay. And then maybe you have. So this is the file from Delhi District. So this is the file. That's all. Okay. So, so whenever you're receiving a file from the source team, so you should check that the file has been downloaded completely or not. Many times it has happened with me as well. Okay. We have received the file from the source team and immediately we have run the job, job failed, throwing the error message that file is not present. Who will tell me why this error message popped up? Job failed, throwing error message that file is not present, but file was present at that location. Why this error message? Who will tell me? Download wasn't completed. Perfect. Okay. Very good. Download was in progress. My bad. My mistake. I ran the job and the job was unable to find that file. So you have to take care that once the file is downloaded or once you have received the file completely, then only you should run the job. Okay. Is this clear? So how to take care of that, how to confirm that the file has been downloaded or not. Okay, so the one manual way, what you can do is, once you have received the file, so obviously that will not be of zero KB or one KB, that will be more than that. That's one way, but that is a manual way. You cannot do that on a daily basis. And guys, you are living in an automation era. Okay, everything should be automated. Nowadays, if you will scan LinkedIn, no? so you will see very few prof job profile with manual testers. Everyone is looking for automation or something like that. So even if you're working in ETL testing, you should know how to automate this. And how you can automate, try to learn C uh, Unix scripting, SQL scripting, and Python scripting. So if you know these three things, it's more than enough if you want to survive in ETL or big data testing or any other testing. Okay, fine. Now, how to check whether the file has been downloaded correctly or not, and the job should not fail, throwing error message that file has not been downloaded. Very important concept. Please make a note. If it has been agreed, you all might remember that when I started this class, this last session last week, I have told that we have an agreement with daily uh, Chennai, Bombay, and all those restaurants that we will receive file by 12 night, right? And Mumbai restaurant, he has told that I will receive file, I will send you file by 1 a.m. night, right? Okay, all the restaurant they agreed that okay, we will send you file by 12. But the Mumbai restaurant, he told me that no, we are commercial area, so we used to close the shop by 12 itself, so I'll be able to send you data by 1. Okay. Now tell me, we have eight sources, seven sources, they are sending data by 12, right? Seven sources, they are sending data, sending data by 12. Mumbai restaurant, they told that they will send data by one. Okay, 1 a.m. Now tell me at what time should I run the job? After 1 a.m. After 1. After 1 means at, at what time? 
like after getting the data from all the eight restaurants. Okay, so at one a.m. I have received data from all the eight restaurants, right? This is clear. At yeah, one. If you have eight jobs, you will run before twelve. If you have only one job, after getting the data from all. Okay. Any other thought? After uh, like around one thirty to two o'clock. One thirty to two o'clock. Oh, very good. This is also correct answer. Guys, see one a.m. Mumbai restaurant has agreed that I will send you data. So it doesn't means that I should start my job at one one, right? Why? Because he has agreed that he will send by one. So maybe sometime he can be delayed by one minute or two minute like that. So I should give a buffer. So at least as a best practice, you should give a buffer of at least one hour. Again, this depends on project to project. Okay, don't take this thumb rule that no, after one hour only after hour. no. But on a safer side, try to run after one hour. So if all the sources have sent you data by one a.m., then at what time you should run the job? Two o'clock. Two a.m. You should run the job. Okay. Why I'm telling that because by two. You will receive all the data, and every all the files will be downloaded as well, because maybe Mumbai restaurant he has sent you data by one a.m., but still it is downloading. Maybe for a particular day, maybe Diwali season, a lot of transactions has happened. You have a huge file, Mumbai restaurant he has sent that file, but at your server maybe there is some server issue, okay, network problem, and still the file is downloading at a slow speed. It is taking time. Right, it can happen. Right, so that's why. So you should take a buffer of at least one, hour and you should start running your job by two. Okay, so take care of this. This is a very important concept, and you should discuss this with the business stakeholders as well. Hope this is clear. You understood the completion of file download. What you have to validate here. Okay, any question on this, guys? No questions. Shall I proceed with the next topic? Yes. Okay. So this was all about completion of file download. You can get questions on this as well. That okay? You have received a file. You run the job. What are the problem. test cases? Sorry. What are the test cases we have to write for this uh, scenario? Oh, you can write test case that validate that the data. Uh, uh, validate that the file uh, has been downloaded completely or not. Like that, you can write something or validate the completion of file in that case. Okay, so like that, you can frame a sentence. Now, uh, the next is full load, truncate load, incremental load. The very, very, very important concept of ETL or any data warehouse project, and you will get question. In interview as well. I'm 100% sure you should know this full load, truncate load, and incremental load. So let's try to understand what this. Before truncate load, I will tell you full load and incremental load. Then I will go to the truncate load. Okay. Fine. Now suppose <clears throat> uh, this is the source file in which I am getting data. Uh, you can get data in excel you can get data in notepad plus plus so all the formats are possible formats you can get data in any of these formats from the source state okay so let me delete this one this as well right date profit Okay, cost. Suppose on a daily basis, we are getting this data. Okay, and this is from maybe Delhi, Delhi district. Okay, and this is 5th December. Yesterday, he has sent me data. Okay, and he has sent me data that you have made a profit of 500 rupees and total cost was 200. Okay, this is the information he gave me. Okay, now take this as 1st, 1st December. 
suppose this was 1st December, this was the information. Second December, this is the information. This is third December. This is fourth. This is fifth. Okay, keep it here. Okay, you understood? So, Delhi restaurant, 1st December, profit was 500, cost was 200. Maybe next day it was 400 and it was 100. And then it was 50. And this was maybe 300. So like that, this is 700, 700, and this was 300, and maybe this is 800, and this is 400. So this is the data, okay. I received on 1st December, 2nd December, 3rd December, 4th December, 5th December, okay. So on 1st December, I have received this record, okay. 2nd December, I received this record, 3rd December, this record, similarly on 4th and 5th December, okay. Now, tell me one thing. Suppose you are standing on seventh, uh, you are standing on second December. So on first December, you will receive this record only. Correct? Is that fine? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, suppose now second December. So the manager is Raghu. Delhi manager name is Raghu. Raghu is the manager of Delhi district. He called me on 2nd December 12th night, okay. And he told me, Tanvir, in this sheet, I have shared you this data of 1st December. Now I'm going to send you data of 2nd December, which is this data, okay. Now tell me one thing, you want both the data or you just want the data of 2nd December? I repeat, Raghu is asking me that Tanvir, you want Full data. Full data means you want the data of 1st December as well, or you want data of only 2nd <coughs> December. Okay, this is the question Raghu has asked. You understood this? Now, I if I will tell to Raghu that Raghu, I want 1st December data as well. Uh, yeah, I want 2nd December as well as 1st December data because I need to do some comparison. And I went through some analysis that how my business is performing, right? So if this is the case, so this is known as full load. This is known as full load. Okay, is that clear? This is yeah. known as full load of data. Now tell me, full load. Okay, now tell me, on 3rd December, on 3rd December, Raghu will send me data of 3rd December only or data of this as well? First and second as well. First and second as First well. And second as First well. and second as well. Because it has been agreed with Raghu that he will send me full load data because I have to do some analysis that how my business is performing, right? If I have, a, if I have full load data, I can see that, okay, 500 profit, next day profit dropped. Again, the profit dropped. Then I can do some analysis that why the profit is dropping day by day, right? So if it has been agreed with Raghu that you have to send the full load data, then on a daily basis, he will give me the full load data. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes. Now on 4th December, Raghu will send me data of 4th December only or 1st, 2nd and 3rd December as well. 1st, 2nd, 3rd. Right, so this is known as full load data. So if it has been agreed with business that they will send you full load data, then on a daily basis, you should receive data of all the days. Okay, okay. so this is known as full load. This is scenario one. Second scenario, incremental load. Okay, incremental load. Again, let's take the same example. Raghu is the manager. 
Raghu has sent me the date of first December. This is fine. Let me mark this by green. We have received this data. Now, second December, Raghu is asking me, Tanvir, you want date of second December only, or you want date of first December as well? I will tell him that no, Raghu, first December data I have already loaded in a staging database. So don't send this. This is not required because already I have this data. I have made a note of this. I don't want this. Just send me second December data. I want this data only. I don't want first December data. Okay. So what Raghu will do? He will delete this data. Okay. Because then we don't want this data. He will delete this and he will send me this data only. Okay. Understood this? So this is known as incremental load or it is also known as delta load. Okay. Incremental load or delta load. Now, 3rd December. On 3rd December, Raghu will send me data of 1st, 2nd as well or only 3rd December? Only 3rd. Only 3rd, right? Yeah. So, he will copy this and he will paste here and he will send me this data only. So I will be having only 3rd December data. I will not receive data of 1st December and 2nd December. This is known as incremental load. Is this clear? Incremental load? Yes. Everyone, this is clear, guys? Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. On 4th December, Raghu is trying to send me data of 4th December. Now tell me, he should send me data of 3rd December and 4th December both or only 4th December? Only 4th. Only 4th. Incremental is very straightforward. As the name indicates, incremental delta will see only the change. We don't want to see the all the previous data as well. So this is known as incremental load and this is known as full load. Now, which one do you think is better? Full load is better or incremental load is better? Any thought, guys? Full load should be better. Full load, full full load, load. should be better. Okay, very good. Why do you think full load is better? Can we can compare, compare, the, compare the values. Compare the values. Okay. See, uh, uh, you are correct. Very good response. And I want this is very good. Try to make the session interactive. Very good. Perfect. See, uh, you are telling full load is good because uh, we can do the comparison. But see, when I have received this first December data, so I have loaded this data in my database. Okay. I have loaded this data in my database suppose 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 so one minute guy strange okay uh, if you guys don't know sql don't bother about that okay just here just i'm trying to create a table the table is still good created okay now let me insert data into this so here what i'm trying to do i'm trying to create restaurant table no, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. No. Let me make the name as this trend and this staging. This is in the staging way. Okay. Hmm. I have created a table, this trend, and this is in the staging layer. Okay. Now I'm trying to insert data into this. Oops. What is the data? 
first of all i want first some more data i want this data right let me keep it here so this one name is daily and then transaction date is Okay, I think this works on the different format of SQL. That's why some of the is coming. I think this doesn't accept so okay. I think there's some syntax on this version of MySQL. Okay, we can try this on uh, Oracle Live SQL as well. Anyway, okay, I will show you this with some other example. Let me check if I'm not sure what side is going here because this works on MySQL and this is different to Oracle platform, but it should work here. No, okay, leave it then, no problem. We'll see this. So we were talking that which one is better, full load or incremental load. So you have told that, okay, in full load, we can do the comparison. So suppose we have a table, this rent underscore stage, okay? In this table, I got this data. This is present here because once I will receive the data in the source file, I will run the job. Okay, and that job will load data into this staging table. Okay, that's the flow. So flow is you will receive a source file, source file. Okay, then you have to run the job. Load data in the staging table. This is the flow, okay? So you have received data of first December. You have loaded this data into the staging table, the staging area. Now, second December, if you have received the data, no? So in full load, you are doing, you are telling that I can do the analysis, but already you have the data present here. Even if, the, if Raghu is sending you second December data, you can copy from here, means you will learn the load job and it will be present here. So you can do the comparison here as well, right? So there's no need to do comparison here. Are you getting my point? So I'm trying to make you understand the data what Raghu is sending you. You are loading data in the staging table and that is getting loaded on a daily basis. So you can do comparison here as well, okay? So there is no strict answer which one is correct, full load is correct or incremental load is correct. That totally depends on the business or the source team in which format they want to send you. Sometimes they will send you full load. Sometimes they will send you incremental load. But you need to validate that if it has been agreed that it is a full load data, then that should be full load. If it is incremental load data, then it should be incremental load. You should validate that. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah, fine. Any question on this? Yeah, then you want to. I have a question here. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please tell me. Yeah. So let's assume like the customer has sent that they will be uh, following the incremental uh, load. Okay. So source and, team, source team has so told right. Yeah, source okay. team has said that it, it ah. will be incremental load. Okay. So, suppose let's assume like there is a uh, change in the previous date data. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. if that is the case, uh, how they will be handling this? Scenario? Okay, okay. Very good question. Very good. Perfect. So, uh, who who is this? Sorry, uh, may I know your name, please? Uh, it's Vaidinathan. Vaidinathan. Okay. So, Vaidinathan has asked a very good question. He told he asked the question that okay, Tanvir, suppose we are talking about incremental load, and suppose this is for the summer data we have received. Okay and we are talking about incremental load. And then next day, 5th December data. So he has sent me this 5th December data and I had loaded here, right? But 
there was some mistake in fourth December data. Suppose this was not 700, this was 600. Assume, okay, this was 600. But by mistake, Raghu has mentioned here 700, right? Raghu has mentioned 700, but the correct number was 600. Then Raghu called me and told me that Tanvi, by mistake, I have mentioned on 4th December, it has 700, but the correct number was 600. So in this case, how you can manage it, right? I think that's the question, Vedanathan. Yes. Okay. So then we have a concept of manual adjustment. Very famous concept, the ETL project, manual adjustment. So whenever you have this kind of scenario that exists, you want to change some data in the existing data, you want to change that, okay? So you can do manual adjustment. That the process is known as manual adjustment. Now, there are two ways, okay? The first way is you will ask to the source team that, okay, you this, this is a mistake from your end. And do one thing, rectify it and send me data again. Okay, and suppose this is 5th of December morning, 8 o'clock, it is discussed. So what he will do, he will, after one hour or one or two hour, or whatever time it may be, he will again do this change. Okay, and he will send you this data. Now see, in your staging table, you have 1st December data, 2nd December data, and 3rd December data, right? This is loaded. And you have loaded the 4th December data as well. Correct? But this was 700. Okay. Now on 5th December, Raghu has sent you this data. And suppose you have loaded this data as well. Then Raghu told you that Tanvi, this was not 700. This should be 600. Right? This should be 600. Then what Raghu has to do is, you will tell to Raghu that Raghu, send me the correct file again send me the correct file again so raghu will send you a new file now which will be having for the number data and this should be 600 okay so now this is the file which raghu will send you and you have to load the data now again okay okay so now when you will load the data now there are two possibilities. The first possibility is this data will be loaded here. Okay. Now what's the problem if this data is getting loaded? What's the problem, guys? Duplicate. Du duplicate. duplicate. Okay. Very good. Very good. Good catch. You can tell me that Tanvir, it's fine. The data has been loaded, but we have duplicate records. Okay. Now the business will get confused. Which one is correct? This one is correct or this one is correct, right? So in this case, the developers, they have to write a code so that any rec new record is coming. If any new record is coming and primary key is same. Okay, let's discuss about primary key. Primary key is a column which should have unique data. Primary key is a column in any table which should have unique data. Unique data means that must not be duplicate. Can you give me an example of primary key from your daily life data? Aadhaar number. Very good. Very good. Aadhaar number. This is primary key. Have you seen two Indians having same Aadhaar number? No. So Aadhaar number is a primary key. Similarly, in this table, which column is primary key? Date. Oh, this is... date because date. for each and every date you will be receiving only one transaction okay <clears throat> so when the developers will write a code they have to implement this logic as well that whenever any new data is coming okay and the same key is present same key is present you see same key is present here for december for december then the code should behave in such a manner that the new record will override the old record. Understood? The new record will override the old record. Is this clear or not? 
one quick question no, no, like, just, just, just a minute just one minute i have not completed this sorry 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 okay uh, i have not completed i have to uh, add some more points to this but to this you understood this concept guys how this will be handled if there is any mistake clear yeah clear, yeah, clear. okay now <laughs> i have to add few more points here okay now stick to the older uh, version only so we we have received 7 700 that's the one way i told you and that's the more formal way you should go by that way only that is the allowed okay but sometimes what happens you should get a written email communication from source team maybe ragu is the source team here ragu will drop you an email that tanvir hi tanvir on 4 december data by mistake i have mentioned profit as 700 but that was 600 okay they, then you can write an update query if you have an update query in sql those who have worked on sql they might know this you can write an update query update restaurant underscore staging okay set profit is equal to 600 where two underscore date <coughs> 4th december ddm yy is equal to transaction <laughs> date okay so directly you can run the <laughs> run this query and this query will update 700 to 600 okay so this is again one way but this is not suggested this is not a good way okay the first way which i have told you that is the more formal way you should go by that only okay now now you this has been updated to 600 okay then you have one more column here insert date and update date okay when this 700 record was inserted on 4th december right it was inserted on 4th december no and when you have changed this 700 to 600 on 5th, 5th december Fifth. So update date will be 5th December. Now, if anyone will see here, he will understand that, okay, this record was received on 4th December, but some changes has been made on 5th December. So these two columns you will find in each and every ETL project. This will be there, mandatory. Insert date and update date. These two columns are known as audit columns or, or yeah, they are known as audit columns. Audit columns and this is the importance of this column from this column you can understand when the record was inserted and when it was updated okay so in this case this should be first december 2021 and this will be null because we have not updated this record now so this will be null only okay is this clear guys yes yeah clear everyone yes, sir. yes. yeah so this is full load and this is incremental load okay and you have to load data in this manner now yeah uh, now ask me the question someone want to ask him question yes yeah, i'm asking like why these are time uh, so when we are when we are trying to load the updated one so we will uh -huh. be comparing both the date as well as the location right ha uh ha -huh. location as well you see here in this table you have to you have to check only the primary key here in my case primary key is date only so i do i will not compare with location okay but suppose if i am getting data from chennai as well okay on 4th december suppose if this is the data then here the combination of restaurant and data date this two is making a primary key right so i have to take a combination of this Chennai and 4 December and I have data of Delhi and 4 December. So then I have to compare loca uh, location as well. Okay. So in that case, I have to compare location and date both because in this case, if I will compare only date, so again, that will be a confusion because for 4 December, I have data from Chennai as well. So I have to compare here location and date both. Is this clear? Yes, sir. So, any question on this full load, incremental load, and how you have to validate and all those things? Is this clear? Yes, sir. 
very important concept. If you want me to repeat, I will repeat this. I don't have any concern. Understood, guys? Everyone? Yeah. Okay. Everyone understood. It's good. Now, then you have historical load as well. I am not mentioned there, but this is also one of the scenario. Historical load. What is historical load? So, what happens? You started getting data from 1st December till 12th December, right? Because you have hired Raghu on 1st December. Okay. You have hired Raghu on 1st December, but you have opened restaurant on maybe June. You have opened restaurant on June 2021. So now you are interested in looking into the data of June july august september october november as well okay and you have all the data but that is in a notepad or bill okay you have you will you go to a restaurant you will see you know they will have some bill right they will write in the bills that okay this is a profit and all these things so you will tell to ragu that ragu this is a very good information you are presenting i can do the analysis this is very good but i want data from june because i have started my restaurant in june and you are sending me data from December only because you have joined from December, but I want data from June, July, August, September, October, November. Okay. So Raghu will ask you that, okay, send me, uh, send me if you have any data, then I will load it here. I will send you that. So that is present in pages. Okay. In bill notepad. Okay. That is present in page. So Raghu will then uh, uh, will search for all the pages. He will collate the data, okay, and then he will keep that in an Excel sheet. And then next day he will do all the hard work, okay, and then he will give you the data of June month, okay, June month all the dates, then July month all the dates, similarly August and September, October. So this is known as historical data, okay. At one go he will send you data of all these days okay and this is known as historical data so they here there is no concept of full load or incremental load or you can tell like this is like a full load only because he will send you data of all the days because transactions is already over for this period so this is known as historical load is this clear historical load full load and incremental load yes Okay, so in historical load, you don't have to bother about uh, full load or incremental. This is like a full load only because he will he will gather the data from all the sources. He will keep that in Excel sheet and then he will send you that. Okay, Tanvir, this is the data of June, July, August, September, October, and November. Is this clear, guys? Any question? Any confusion? Shall I proceed? Yes. Yes. Are you guys yeah. able to understand or if you want me to repeat, I am ready to repeat. You should know this. This is a very important concept, type of loads. They can ask you this question. Okay, tell me type of loads in ATL flows. Very common question. So these are the two famous type, full load, incremental load and historical load. Okay. This is also known as current load. Full load and incremental load, they both come under the bucket of current load. Okay because you are loading the current data or the daily basis data. So current load, you have two categories, full load, and then you have incremental load. And historical load will be the historical load that will be full load only, current load, full load or incremental. Okay, shall I proceed? Yes. Okay, perfect. Now, similarly, you have data of Chennai and other restaurants. Okay, maybe it is 700 or something like 300, something like that. And you have inserted date, updated, everything is presented. Okay, this is your staging layer table. Okay. Now, I have one more concept here, truncate and load. Okay, this is truncate and load. Let's try to understand this. So guys, now this is going to be complicated. So give okay, full concentration, ask me questions if you have any, okay? Now, after the staging, we used to load data in integration layer, right? So in a staging, you have loaded data. So the flow is like, you have received the source file from the source team. 
you have validated the file format, the total number of source files, header and trailer, everything you have checked and it looks good. Then you have run the job. After running the job, data is loaded in a staging table. After a staging, you have to load data in integration layer, IL. Okay, have to load data in integration layer. So this table name is restaurant IL. So maybe tomorrow I will create these tables and I will show you, okay, how this is happening. So restaurant stage, this was a staging and then you're loading data in IL layer, fine. Now, uh, you can ask me question that then we, uh, okay, no, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. So this entire data, no, this is, Just a minute, I have to do something here. Okay, so these are the columns. This was the staging table, okay? And then now we have I layer table. So suppose this is 1st December today. So this record will be loaded into your I layer. Now, what is net profit? Net profit means profit minus cost. So how much you will get here? 500 minus 300. 200 should be 300, okay? Insert date will be this one. So you will be having any update date here? or null? No, none. Why? No updates. Because I have not updated any record here, so update date will be null. So if update date is null, it means there is no changes in this record. Okay. Now, 2nd December, I have received this data. Let me copy paste it here. Net profit, same formula, 400 minus 100. 300 is the net profit. Insert date is 2nd December. Okay. Any update? No update, right? Okay. Similarly, this one. Net profit is 300 minus. Think this is the one. Insert date is this. There is no update, right? Now, uh, I have a question. Uh, think carefully and tell me the answer, okay? <clears throat> question is, you can, uh, why I have created two different tables, restaurant IL and restaurant stage. What is the purpose of this? So, yeah, net to profit remove any is duplication. The, so the staging table, uh, maybe the staging table, maybe, uh, having a similar of a legacy data, whereas mm -hmm. the uh, IL may have more columns for our convenience for the updated uh, database. We are applying some transformation rules in integration. Perfect, data. perfect, perfect, yeah. So if you see here, I'm applying some uh, transformations, right? You can see. So here, I'm not talking about legacy, but that's also correct. In legacy data, we used to do that, okay. but. For this example, why I have created this new table, this tile. So we have a new column here, net profit, right? This is the only, we have a new column here, net profit, right? And because of this, I have created this new table. And in this net profit, I'm applying a formula that profit minus cost, right? I'm applying formula profit minus cost. So here, if someone will ask you that what is the transformation you have applied here? On which column you have applied transformation? Profit minus cost. Profit and cost. Net, cost, net profit. So if someone will yeah. ask you what is the transformation logic, you can tell transformation logic we have applied on net profit column and the logic minus. is profit minus cost. Minus so cost. this is known as transformation. So this is a simple example I have told you, but that depends from project to project. Maybe in project we'll be having complicated logics, but because of this, we have a different logic. 
so we have created a new table we so you can ask me question that then we i can do this in this one as well right in the staging as well so guys <coughs> we don't want to disturb the staging table okay because this is just a simple example i have shown you but when you will work on the project no it will become very complicated so that's why it is the best practice to do all the logics you guys are not speaking please go on mute some disturbance is coming so yeah so that's when a live project so a staging is just a dumping area what you are getting from the source you will dump here and all the logics will apply in the other table that is known as integration layer or integration table so hope you understood little bit about why we have integration layer because we want to apply the logics any question on this any other any other doubt any other confusion anything you want to add is this clear guys yes sir in this case what we have loaded in access layer only net profit column so access layer i will come to the access layer okay so keep that okay for the time being uh let's concentrate on staging and integration layer only access layer i will come to that after some time maybe in the next class okay uh fine uh, so any question on this here when this data will be loaded like the integration layer when we will be loading this because uh, on okay. daily basis uh very good very good daily basis actually what will happen no so once you see this is the flow you have received source file you run the job data loaded in a staging immediately once the data has been loaded in a staging table immediately data should be loaded in integration layer once the staging is completed then the data should be loaded in integration layer but there is one condition in a staging the job must not fail if the job has failed in a staging because of any reason the job will fail maybe the data is not complete maybe the file has not been received or whatever it may be so if the data has been loaded in a staging table full data loaded then immediately the il uh, the, the data in il table should be loaded immediately okay the only condition is in a staging table sh should be having full load of data all the data should be loaded here job should not fail is that clear i answered your question yeah yeah okay any other question very good any other question Uh, tell me, uh, staging and yeah. Yeah, 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 please ask. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Hello. Ha, Tanvir. Uh, hmm. Is this uh, in in all project the staging layer and integration layer will be present for all the? In most of the projects, I oh, see a staging will be there in all the ATL projects. No doubt. Okay. Okay, this will be then all the ETL projects. In some of the ETL projects, IL will not be there. They will be having access layer. Okay, so so don't get confused with that. I will tell you okay. that why they they will skip this integration layer. Why they want to remove the integration layer. And why they will keep that access there only. But to answer your question now, in all the projects, a staging layer will be there, and all the projects will be like a dumping area. So what you're getting from source, they will dump here. like when you when you went to this uh, any mall okay you have done some shopping you have you have bought clothes shirt okay trousers and they have bought shoes okay and some other like, creams and all those things once you will reach your house so what you will do you will dump it on your bed or somewhere on a, on a dining space right once you will get relaxed you will take some water drink food and everything then after some time you will segregate it okay you will keep your clothes in your almira you will keep uh, your shoes to some other place the kitchen items will be in kitchen right and you like uh, shampoo and all those things will be in washroom something like that then you will do the segregation no so this is exactly same so once you receive data from source file you will dump in the staging so in most of the projects this this will be there integration layer is like your kitchen you are cooking food here okay you are applying transformation logic here then you will be having access layer but yes in few of the projects you will not be having integration layer all the tasks we will do in access layer okay but we will see that yeah, now in that case here uh, integration layer uh, will carry out the business transformation ah, also, right? correct correct if in any project so if it is not there hmm. yeah then it will be carried out on directly the staging layer the transformation or uh, no 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 
and transformation yeah. will never happen on staging if you don't have integration okay. layer transformation will happen on access layer or directly it will be uh, on directly will be on the access layer no transformation nothing will happen in staging okay. Okay, okay it is like you went to a mall you bought some vegetables you will start cooking there no you will bring those vegetables to your home then only you will cook so it is same way okay, okay. yeah any other question Clear. sir you said that uh, data will be loaded on the same time in staging and il mm -hmm. job is this job will be same for both no no different jobs very oh, good question yeah, yeah. different job source okay. file run the stage job okay this will be different a stage load job this will be different De load data in a staging table completely please make a note of this complete data should be loaded in a stage then only i'm writing in plain english then only run the il layer job and load data in il layer or il tables okay this job will be totally different a staging job will be totally different if a staging job will fail you should not load data in il why why what is the reason that is incomplete data very good incomplete data will move into the il layer right that's why if the staging job will fail you should not load data in the il layer very important okay fine perfect now uh, i was uh, okay any other questions yeah like uh, when uh, this il layer we are putting the data so how is it like we in, uh, like communicate this to developer that we want this logic net profit logic to be implemented something like that or how um, like very we good. we need to make the changes mm -hmm. in the job very good very good very good see very good uh, guys it's 8 7 i'm sorry uh, i have extended by 7 minutes those who have some commitment they can drop if you want to continue please continue okay so yeah uh, i think uh, may i know your name please oh yes madhvi 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 has asked a question that tanvir you have added a new column net profit so do i need to communicate with this developers that this new column is there and the logic and the job will be different or whatever it may be so actually what happened this net profit is a new column or this is the logic where we have applied so this will be discussed at the very beginning when you have the requirement call with the business or the business analyst they will tell you that okay we will send you this information restraint date profit cost insert this this you have to add they will tell you that we will give you these four columns and then on top of this you please calculate net profit and apply the formula they will tell you formula as well okay the business analysts or the business stakeholders they will tell you formula as well that the formula is profit minus cost so this is already discussed your developer has developed this they have implemented this logic into the job okay if once that is done that is over they have done this development in the dev environment then only your developer will tell you that okay tanvir i have developed this logic i have implemented this in job as well this is the table name and this is the table name in il layer this is the job uh, staging load job script this is the il layer job script now you can start testing okay so once you will give all this information then i will run the job and it will be loaded here so you don't have to coordinate with the development team but if you think that here you have started testing okay and suppose madhi you observe that here the number is 200 okay in the once you loaded the data and you observe that number is 200 here so ideally this should be how much 250 okay yeah and you observe here it is 200 so it means the logic what development team has implemented that is not correct it means they are not following this formula okay maybe by the, the formula is profit minus cost but development team they have applied profit plus cost I mean by mistake okay they have implemented this formula so this number will be 700 okay this will be 500 this will be 350 so once you will start testing you will apply your this formula because this formula was shared by the business stakeholders or the business analyst 
So you will think that this should be 500 minus 200, 300, and this is 700. Then you have to raise a defect to the developer. Okay, and you tell, you take the screenshot, you tell them that this is the data which is coming and developers will look into the logic what they have implemented. So it goes like this. Okay, have I answered your question? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. That, that was a very good question. Okay, any other question? Someone was yeah. asking question, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, one question. So suppose, if uh, assume like we don't have a profit or it is a loss, uh -huh. will that in, uh, whether the uh, IL data will load that data or it will not based on the logic? Okay, so you are telling that we have a loss. Okay, maybe you are correct that it is not possible that every day you are making profit. Someday you might have loss as well. Okay, so this will again be discussed with the business stakeholders at the very beginning during requirement gathering. You have a requirement gathering or this is known as analysis call. Okay, in this call, you should ask these questions that, okay, if I have loss, if there is any loss a particular day, so what will happen? So generally the, what they will do, they will mention the number in negative. Okay. So if it is negative, it means this is a loss. Okay. That depends. Okay. So they will tell you that if the numbers is coming in negative, so it means that is loss. Fine. Or maybe they will tell you that, no, I will create a new column. I will create a new column here and the loss will be shown in under column. So if suppose there is a loss of 300, so, and then the profit will be zero. This loss profit will be zero. So they will give you a new column and then you have to load this column in a staging and you have to load this column in I layer. Okay, you cannot add a new column by yourself. You have to discuss with the business then only you can add. And this all has to be discussed during requirement gathering or analysis phase. But suppose once you started testing and this came to your mind that, okay, maybe loss can also happen. So this is not there, like you have asked me, okay? So in that case, you have to schedule a call with a business analyst and you tell them that if loss is there, how I can get the information, okay? So it goes like that. Have, have I answered the question? Yes. So, so, so do you say like that our the the job when it, while it's running, it will validate that whether it's a profit or loss, and based on that, it will be uh, updating the record accordingly in the respective table. Uh, updating? No, it will insert. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. It will insert accordingly as per that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Makes okay. sense. Thank you. But yeah. you cannot add any new column on your own. You might think that, okay, loss, he has not mentioned, let's add a loss column. No, you cannot do anything. You have to discuss with the business. You can suggest him. Okay, sometimes it happens that the testers, they're very smart and they have got some new idea. You can suggest that, okay, there should be one loss column as well. And if it looks good, they will tell them, okay, please add a loss column. That's very good suggestion. Okay. So is this clear, guys? Any, any other questions? Yeah. Any other question? All clear? Uh, how can we validate the uh, uh, new column like new pro uh, net profit? Uh, uh, do we uh, write an SQL query to ah, certify uh, right, values? Right. right. So uh, I think I have mentioned this now to Madhvi that net profit formula is profit minus cost. Okay. <laughs> and this has been agreed with the business analyst that this is the formula. Okay. Developer has developed this and by mistake, they have used the formula profit plus cost. Okay, by mistake in the job, they have mentioned the formula as profit plus cost. So this number is coming 500 plus 200, 700. Now as a tester, I started testing this. Okay, then I will write a SQL query for this. That Okay, select profit, comma, cost, comma, profit minus cost as net profit okay from restaurant underscore il table okay you can write a sql query for this this is a sample query i've shown you you when you when you will run this okay you will get the numbers as profit cost is this 
and net profit will be 500 minus 200, 300, 400 minus 100, 300, 300 minus 50, 250. And then you have to compare that, okay, this is 300, but in date table, it is coming 700. This is 300, they should be, this is 500. It means the numbers are not matching. So it means there is some issue. Then you have to raise the defect to the developers that as per my understanding, the number should be 300, but here it's coming 700. Please check your code. Then you have to raise a defect in Jira or whatever platform. You have to take a screenshot and then the development team, they will look into that logic and then they will see that, okay, by mistake, I've added plus sign. Then they will change it to the minus in the job. Everything will be done in the job. Okay, they will they will keep uh, make it minus sign and then they will tell you that, okay, I have fixed this, please test it again. Then again, you have to test it. Okay, is that clear? Yeah, okay. Have I answered your question? Yes, yes. Okay, very good. So I thought of completing truncate and load, but uh, it will take time. So no issues. Let's just stop here. Uh, do revise this. I have a question, a uh, small question here. Sure, sure, sure. So after fixing the logic in the job, so again, we have to rerun the job, right? So Perfect. Uh, again, the request very will good. append. Again, you have to rerun the job of IL layer. Very good. Again, when you will run the job of IL layer, so that those changes will be made and then you will see a new fresh data. Okay, this will be changed. Okay, if he has done the correct way, you have to run again the job, then only you do whatever changes the development team they have done, you will be able to see. Okay, so you see like sometime you, you used to refresh no, to see the, see the changes. So running the job is like a refresh only. Once you run the job, again the data will be a refresh and you will see the new set of data. Okay. Is that clear? No. Yeah, clear. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, how was the session today? You understood everything? Any feedback? Uh, it was like informative. Okay. Do you think this was a little bit uh, high level or you guys got confused, more technical, something like this? Anyone? No. no, no. no. Okay, fine. But do let me know. Uh, either you can tell me in the call or you can WhatsApp me. That can be this is the problem. I was unable to understand. His speed was more. Reduce it or give some more examples or whatever it may be. Okay. From... From today onwards, we are moving into the technical aspects. So you should know, and these are the very core concepts of any ATL projects. Okay, perfect, guys. So let's meet tomorrow. Okay, one one more thing, just the last question. Uh, if I change time from eight to nine instead of seven to eight, is that fine, or you want to continue with seven to eight only? Seven to eight. Seven Please to eight. Continue. Continue. Seven to eight. Okay. Because we are having office. Ah, uh -huh. perfect, 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 perfect. Got it. Got it. So we'll continue with seven to eight only, no issues. Okay, thank you. I will share this sheet and the recordings as well. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Please thank you. Care. Bye. Thank you.